Hi guys, Queen of Flannel here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to my first video for Mermaid. I'm super excited. This is my first time um, participating in anything Mermaid and what better way to jump into this than with a Kirby picture because apparently that's all I feel like coloring lately. Um, you know, I've been working in Mythic World and uh, looking through some of my other Kirby books and trying to plan out some future projects, but we're going to work in Mythomorphia today, and we're going to use my... I'm trying to find a way to angle this so that my light doesn't reflect off the tin and blind you guys. Um, my brand new set of 72 Derwent Chromaflows. Uh, I got this off Amazon. I paid probably way too much for it because I just couldn't, couldn't wait. Uh, the price has since dropped down. I think when I got this a couple weeks ago, uh, and it just showed up over the uh, the weekend, I paid $130 for it. And it's now down below $100. Uh, and it is also available, from what I saw, on Blick. So I will link to a couple... Uh, those websites down below if you're interested in picking up a set for yourself. Now, I'm not planning on doing a swatching or review video on on these. Uh, I have really tried to stay away from uh, from that. There are plenty of channels out there that specialize in doing reviews and are way better at it than I am um and uh yeah so I have no plans to do any kind of like full review on these I will talk a little bit about how I feel about them as we're coloring this uh this image but yeah so we're gonna work with these today I've been playing with them I have the 24 set that I've used as kind of my move around slash travel set and I really like them, so let me go ahead and show you guys what image we are going to work on today. Uh, we're going to work on the Mer Dragon Mer, Mer Horse. I'm I'm not sure. It kind of looks like kind of looks like a uh, a Mer Dragon. But I thought this would be a fun, fun to work on, and I kind of have a bit of a color palette picked out. I don't know if I have any of the yellow out, but yeah, most of most of these are actually all over my desk because I've been working on some uh, things with them. Grab. Start with these two, and then we will go from there. And I think I had a reference photo for this that I pulled up on Pinterest. So let me see if I can find it. So that's kind of what I'm, what I'm going there I think uh, with the yellow and the turquoise so I should probably keep that open that would be that would be helpful and apologies for the sharpening but yeah so I'll kind of talk through um, talk a little bit about these as we're working with them uh, for one, uh, those of you that have been around my channel for a bit know I'm I'm a, a fan of Derwent's uh, products. I have most of their pencil sets. I think I'm missing um, I'm missing the studio, the artist, the drawing set, and I think that's it. And I use them pretty frequently. 
I have found a use for pretty much all of them. And so I bought the, the 24 set of these, of the Chromoflows, uh, shortly after they came out last year. And they were uh, the set that, you know, I would take into the bedroom if I wanted to color in the bedroom. Limited color palette, but they blend nicely enough together that you can you can uh, get other colors out of them. So I really wasn't too fussed by the uh, the fact that there was only twenty four of them. So when I heard that. They were coming out with bigger sets and additional colors. I knew eventually I was going to get them. And so for me, I find these perform somewhere in between the Pro Colors and the Color Soft. The Pro Colors are a fairly hard pencil. So when I use those, I use them more for detail work. So if I'm doing markers with pencils over top, especially in a Kirby book, I like them for uh, for that. The biggest issue I have with the Pro Colors is they're they're not they're definitely not good for like what I'm doing now with filling in. Uh, large amounts of space quickly and that's fine you know I found a use for them so they work good for details you have to be careful with the pro colors if you press too hard with them they will dent the paper in some of the books I've had that uh, happen and that's you know easily fixed with just controlling how you hold your your pencil but that is something that you have to be kind of mindful of with the pro colors uh the color soft are a softer uh softer pencil uh, they blend a little a little easier than the pro colors do the biggest issue i have with the color soft is how crumbly they are and they're kind of messy. I don't use the, the color soft very much, uh, but these, the color, uh, the Chroma Flow, I find are a nice balance between the two. This is a fairly substantial area that I have filled in relatively quickly with, with this. And there's no mess on my paper. There's no crumbles to brush to brush off. And I still think this is a pretty good point held on this on this pencil. So I think they're really good for large spaces and detail work from my experience. They blend really nicely with each other. I haven't worked with them in combination with any of my other Derwent sets or any of my other pencils, so I can't really say, you know, how well the you know the colors match up. So if you wanted to use these with your light fast, how um how accurate the the color matching is going to be i mean logically you would think they all come from derwent that they're going to be the same or close to across the lines that's not always the case there are some different uh different colors in each of the sets but from other things that i have uh seen and read from uh some of the other colorists and art supply reviewers they play nicely with the other their white lines so but 
but they feel um they feel really nice to use. They are a thinner barrel than the the other uh Derwent sets. Which I was kind of disappointed about that. I like the chunky barrels. Mainly it's just because they were more comfortable to hold for longer periods of time. Again, since you can fill areas in relatively relatively quickly with these, you have issues with your hands. These might be a uh, a good option for you. But anyways, so that's about the extent of reviewing that I uh, plan to do on these. If you have questions about them, feel free to ask and I will answer in the comments. But for the most part, we're just going to let the pencils speak for themselves as we work on our uh, Ur dragon, I guess. I'm, you know what? We're just gonna roll with it. It's a mer dragon. That's that's what I'm calling it. So, um, I hope everybody has been well. If uh, you are in a location that celebrated Mother's Day yesterday, I hope that you had a awesome, awesome Mother's Day. I uh I spent Saturday with my mom and my sister. We we try and uh go every year and do mother daughter uh pedicures. And then we have uh lunch somewhere, so we went and did did pedicures and then we had a lunch at a, a nice uh, Mexican restaurant which it wasn't a bummer. I I feel like I've I've gotten used to having to kind of navigate this uh this world now. So I don't think I mentioned on uh on any of my videos that I can't currently eat nightshades. So tomatoes, eggplant, any kind of pepper. Uh, paprika certain like red seasonings i have had to cut out of my uh, my diet and it was partly because i was having some like i have mentioned that i'm fairly certain i have undiagnosed fibro fibromyalgia uh but i was having a lot of like joint and joint inflammation and um issues with my with my skin and i started doing some doing some research and into the AIP diet which is the autoimmune protocol diet and um you know there's no conclusive links out there between food intolerance and autoimmune issues but it you know it's one of those things that your doctors will say well if you find that certain foods you know seem to cause issues then try cutting them out of your diet and so uh, the AIP diet is basically you start off not really being able to eat a whole lot uh, you cut out gluten, you cut out dairy, you cut out soy, nuts, a um, whole bunch of other stuff. And then you give your body kind of an opportunity to re reset. And then you start adding things back in one at a, one at a time until you figure out what it is that that's causing you issues and so 
you know, my husband at first was like, well, maybe it's gluten. And we ruled gluten out because I was able to, I was able to eat pizza with the family. Uh, we had pizza one night and I ate like, some of the pepperoni pizza with red sauce and I spent like the next few days and um it took like a week or two for my face to, to clear up but just horrible joint pain fatigue etc cetera, etc cetera. and then the next time we had pizza I avoided the pizza with red sauce and just had uh one with white sauce and I was perfectly fine so we we ruled out gluten uh I wasn't having any issues with dairy. We ruled that out. And then I started kind of zeroing in on tomatoes. So I tried cutting out tomatoes and then had uh, an incident where we had a rotisserie chicken that I had gotten from uh, the local grocery store. And I had issues after eating the rotisserie chicken like my the whole side of my face just looked like it exploded and so I went back and looked at the, the bag and the barbecue sauce had paprika in it no tomatoes but paprika so I was like okay well let's see what I can find so started doing some research on nightshades and eventually narrowed it down to narrowed it down to that and I have not had um anything to to my knowledge that ha extend has extensive copious amounts of nightshades or anything in it in I'd say probably two two and a half months actively avoiding um you know eating anything with uh with tomatoes or peppers or paprika in it and i haven't had any issues since so i no longer eat tomatoes at least for the time being and so um it's become a looking at menus before I go someplace and trying to find things that I can either have them um, leave the tomatoes out or that don't have tomatoes in them. And I can, um, I can eat things that like, it's not a, like a, the point where if the surface is like contaminated, it's actual like ingestion like I can touch tomatoes and peppers and things like that. I cut cut them up perfectly fine for um the rabbits and the guinea pigs and and whatnot and I don't have any issues. It's just ingesting them. So obviously going to a Mexican restaurant is is challenging because there are tomatoes and peppers in pretty much everything. But this place actually had they had um a, a simple nacho appetizer that didn't didn't have any extra stuff in it and then I was able to get a um a quesadilla that uh was just cheese and chicken so yeah that's currently where where I'm at with that but anyways segue uh, I did spend Saturday with my mom and my sister, and so it was nice to get get out of the house and then, you know, just trying to get things done around the house, sorting through, sorting through stuff and things and all of the junk and basically just trying to Marie Kondo my life before... Uh, I leave on my my work trip, which is fast approaching. So I was working on that this morning before I started recording. 
I'm recording this in the morning and it'll come out later in the afternoon and went through a huge box of stuff and threw a bunch of things out and pulled a bunch of things aside to donate and gone through my closet and all that fun stuff. But we had um, a bunch of boxes and things in our half finished dining room that I'm hoping now once uh, I, I get rid of all of that stuff that we will actually be able to finish our dining room. Uh, we had a bunch of work done to it, like right around the uh, when the pandemic started. Had a window taken out and a sliding glass door put in, and my office was built onto onto the dining room uh, last year. Uh, my husband built this space for me. We had contractors come in and do the uh, the sliding door. But then in the process of that and of building the office, my husband was not happy with the state of the drywall. So he wants to rip out all of the current drywall and replace it and redo it himself. And we redid the floor with like snap in linoleum. So all sorts of projects. And then hopefully when I come back from a work trip, we will be able to look into having kitchen redone. I actually really like the green color this is giving me here, mixing this. Um, so this is turquoise green and sun yellow. And I will put my, my combos down in the uh, in the uh, description. But yeah, I like the, the color that it's giving me at that intersection there. But yeah, so hopefully do a bunch of work uh, on the house when I come back. We have plans to completely gut and redo our uh, our kitchen. It's just, it's horribly out of date. And we live in a split level ranch. And so the uh, staircase down to the finished basement is between the uh, dining room and the kitchen and the railing on it is probably out of code not that i have a small child that's going to like squeeze down down through there but a small child could squeeze down through there so we have plans to uh, redo the railing and um my husband wants to build like a half wall on one side so gonna take a sip of my coffee real quick but uh yeah and there's just not a lot of uh storage in our kitchen there's no pantry the countertops and the way things are placed is kind of kind of weird so there's no countertop next to our stove which makes you know prep work very difficult. I, I guess it just is because of where the uh, gas line runs. Um, it's basically the stove and then just this tiny little sliver of countertop and then the sink. So we plan to, uh, to have that all redone. My husband wants to you know, move the... Um, have the stove moved and then they put our it's like an l shape and so the dishwasher is next to the sink but it's in the corner so when you're unloading the dishwasher you basically have to pull everything that's out of the dishwasher 
put it on the counter and then close the dishwasher to be able to put it into the cabinets. The door to the dishwasher interferes with being able to get to the cabinets. So just not laid out very uh, efficiently. And when we refinanced our mortgage, we had to have uh, we had to have somebody come in and you know do a value assessment on the house. And even he was like in his report, like kitchen outdated. And I was like, oh no. But hopefully, when I come back, we'll have the uh, have the money to just do it outright and not have to finance it like we did with some of the other some of the other repairs that we had done on uh, <clears throat> done on the uh, the house and I have to look for additional work when I come back anyways I was I tried um I was live streaming over on Twitch for gosh, three years and just it, it it didn't contribute to the paying of the bills so you know i gave it a, a good good try at making it um making it a career and it just didn't didn't work out so Wow, we filled this in like super quick. And I won't say I was being like messy, but I definitely was not doing tiny little circles that you have to do with certain colored pencils. Oh, uh, let me look at my reference photo here. See what his face looks like. All right, so go back to the yellow for most of the face. Actually, pass. I was working with it. Bring in this is um this is Dijon. Uh, let's see, so most of, in my reference photo, most of his nose is this, uh, is yellow, so we're going to roll with that, and I am using, I'm using a reference photo of a seahorse for my color palette, but. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. This is this is kind of insane for me for a Kirby book to have this much, this much filled in, and we've only been thirty minutes. I've been recording, so these pencils could honestly be a game changer for some of these more detailed books. I don't know if I have my Gamsol marker out here, but I mean, I'm not at the point where I'm ready to, where I'm ready to Gamsol anything anyways. I don't have enough layers down for that, but just for like a base layer on this is wild. Like I'm kind of, 
kind of mind jacked, you guys. And so I know right now it kind of looks very muted and pastel, but these pencils, as long as you don't burnish your toothier paper away, these pencils do build up to some pretty vibrant, um, vibrant colors. So we should be able to get a, uh, pretty nice uh, color color vibrancy once we build up a, a few more a few more layers and we will bring in some darker uh darker values darker colors here for our, our shading Let's bring in <laughs> okay. This, this is a uh... hold on. I'm just gonna look at something. So, looking at some of the color names. All right, we're gonna we're gonna take a take a minute here. So. This is uh this is parmesan. And this is like this the cream color of this set. So we've got parmesan. Uh let's see what else is here. Dijon. We've got melon. Basil. Brown sugar. I'm not going to go through all of these. This is just what's on my desk. Raisin. Let's see if there's any anything else out here. Pear. Spice. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Th this is just out of what I've been using and what's on my desk that are named after food. So I think somebody at Derwent, when they were naming these, was a little hungry. That's actually pretty, pretty funny. And I kind of love it. <laughs> now I'll have to um, I'll have to go in off uh, off camera and kind of see how many how many more uh, pencils in the set are named after food. I'm going to take this a little farther up here to blend this out. Okay. And... Uh, oh, that's not the one.
add some of the uh, turquoise green here. But yeah, these are uh, these are really nice uh, pencils, and I hope that Derwin adds more to this line. I mean, I know we we just got the seventy two, and I think seventy two is perfectly acceptable, but. If this is meant to be their kind of their their prismacolor competitor, I would not hate seeing a more down the road in this uh in this line. I would readily buy. Anything else that came out in the, the Chroma Flow line. Um, let's see. Back over here. I would even consider using these for a background with how quickly this is this is going. And I generally avoid using uh pencils to do backgrounds like the plague. But I would consider it with these. Okay, I'm gonna have to turn the book just to kind of get the uh the angle need over here without contorting my wrist into a painful position. Like, find these enjoyable to use.
Okay. Let's back around. Sure, I want to. I want to do with it in down here. So I'm gonna that for right now. And I'm gonna lighten up some of these areas down here. Highlight. Back in and darken up some of this. So, I think, uh, channel, channel news, we that, uh, so, I have been scaling back to, uh, trying to do two videos a week on Mondays and Fridays. And uh, starting in June, it will more than likely get scaled back to one video a week for the next uh, next little little while. Uh, and I'm shooting for Fridays. Um, this might this might change, but it will. Hopefully not be for for good. Just for the next uh, next little little while. I will have more info about that as kind of go forward. But I am trying to use. Some of my my time to pre-record some things that I hope I will be able to on week in between house projects. Uh, what to talk about? What to talk about? Um, more channel channel info. So we are almost at the four thousand watch hours needed to apply for um for monetization. 
And then um, I think last I looked, we were about 130 away from the uh, the sub requirement. So getting close to that, which is exciting. And I hope uh, that when I come back from my work trip, I'll be able to work on uh, better better camera setup. When I have uh, some more funds to do so. Always got to be thinking ahead. So I'm pretty excited about that. I mean, other than that, there has not really been a whole lot else going on in my house. Just trying to get all of the things done. All right, let me see. Next. All right, so I'm going to start bringing in some darker... Some darker uh, tones here, but I'm going to take a sip of my coffee first. is like a little in the over so I will probably go in here up underneath this little area with an even darker color to add some uh, shading in there And I am not going to do this with every single scale on here. I just like to do a, a few just for variation. Just to kind of make them stand out a little bit. Some air. 
But this is uh this is where these punk I think job once you is able to uh smooth things out. I think these would do well over marker too. I'll have to find a uh, project. And I will have to come back through here too with a darker uh, yellow color as well, just to uh, deepen up some of those areas. Hmm, and I'm trying to ponder what I want to do with the background.
All right, so I think this is where we're gonna gonna stop for today. Um, I think this is gonna be our project for the week. Uh, I I'm pretty certain based on how quickly this this part went that uh, I can that I can finish this up. Uh, two parts. So I might go in and do some of the work on uh, some of the detail work on the uh, the mer horse uh, off camera. I'll probably finish the fin and I'll do some of the background, some of the fish, figure out what color I want to do the fish in. And then I think we can finish this up in parts. So this may not confirmed. This might be a uh, a part uh, a part two on Friday for uh for this one, but um yeah I think that's gonna be it for me for today. So thank you guys so much for joining me for our first mermaid image. And if you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell to get notified when I post additional content, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much.